city of Chicago has 77 neighborhoods. Most of these neighborhoods are relatively peaceful, but there are a few that are not. In fact, some of these neighborhoods are in a state of constant war. Over the past four years, I have witnessed and filmed the aftermath of the extreme violence taking place across the city. What you are now about to see are the top 10 most violent neighborhoods in Chicago. The North Lawndale neighborhood is located about five miles west of the Loop. The area was settled in 1827 and was part of the Lawndale Crawford area, which was originally part of the town of Cicero. But in 1869, Chicago annexed Lawndale. In 1870, Realtors Millard and Decker subdivided the land and named the area Lawndale. They did this to attract people to move into the community. After the Great Chicago Fire of 1871, many people came flocking to this neighborhood because of how well the homes were built. Sandstone bungalows were in demand after the Chicago Fire destroyed all the wood structures. Over the next 30 years, the neighborhood remained unchanged until the turn of the century, when more people started to migrate to this neighborhood. And this was because jobs were plentiful in the area, because of companies like McCormick Reaper Works, which later became International Harvester Company, Western Electric in Cicero, and Sears Roebuck and Company, which was located in the heart of North Lawndale. In the early 1900s, more Russian Jews migrated into this neighborhood. And by the mid-1920s, they became the majority. This neighborhood became a thriving middle-class Jewish community over the next few decades. By the early 1950s, everything in the Lawndale community would change. Following the decision by the U.S. Supreme Court declaring restrictive covenants unconstitutional. This ruling changed the landscape of dozens of neighborhoods in Chicago forever. North Lawndale was a community that did not want blacks moving in. But once the covenants were lifted, they had no choice. Blacks were looking for an escape from the deteriorating Bronzeville neighborhood. And once again, what they wanted was better schools and better looking homes. As blacks started flooding in, the Jewish families that could afford to started to flee farther north to neighborhoods like Westridge, Forest Glen, Evanston, and Skokie. After five years of black migration to the area, racial tensions started boiling over in the neighborhood. There were one or two Jewish gangs from the 20s and 30s still operating in the neighborhood. These gangs started attacking the newly arriving blacks around the neighborhood and at schoolyards like William Cullum Bryant School at 14th and Kentville. The school no longer stands. This schoolyard is where West Side black gangs got started in the mid-1950s. These gangs were first organized to protect blacks from the white Jewish gangs that were preying on lone newly arriving blacks. Two of the early gangs formed were the Egyptian Cobras, which later changed their name to Mickey's Cobras. And the other was the Imperial Champlains. They also changed their name to the Vice Lords and then the Conservative Vice Lords. The black population exploded and became the majority in the neighborhood by the mid-1950s. This was mainly due to blockbusting that forced large numbers of whites and their businesses to flee. This dragged the neighborhood down, eventually turning it into a crime-ravaged slum by the late 1950s. The Lawndale area became worse than the West Side and South Side ghettos. In the mid-50s, the Chicago outfit flooded this neighborhood and the surrounding communities with heroin. This act by the outfit financed the rise of the gangs of North Lawndale, and along with the heroin came the guns. This started the heroin epidemic that still haunts this neighborhood today. In 1957, calls to clean up the neighborhood by the residents and city hall grew louder. 
So the Chicago Police Department had its officers do a massive couple of month long sweep of the black street gangs. This was done with brute force, to say the least. Teen blacks that were arrested in the sweep were sent to the Illinois Reformatory for Boys in St. Charles, Illinois. In this facility, a teen from North Lawndale named Edwin Pepelo Perry and six members of the Imperial Champlain got together and started a gang called the Vice Lords. By 1958, Perry and his boys were out and the Vice Lords set up shop at 21st and Lawndale and then went on a rampage, brutally forcing other gangs to flip to the Vice Lords or face the violent consequences. The Vice Lords terrorized the North Lawndale community into the early 60s. The reason why the Vice Lords became so powerful early on was they were one of the first street gangs to adopt the early structure of the Chicago outfit. They had a leader, street generals, enforcers, and thousands of soldiers. The structure they adopted made them very successful and grew so rapidly because of this change in structure. They were able to spread out and destroy many of Chicago's neighborhoods like a cancer spreading through the human body. From 1953 to 1954, the Ogden Court's projects were built. And over the next couple of years, the Vice Lords took control of these buildings. And this caused problems for the blocks that surrounded the projects. And because of this takeover, a gang was formed just to oppose the Vice Lords. The Satan Disciples Street Gang was a gang made up of white, and Mexican greasers from 15th and Tallman. They have been battling them for over 50 years. In 1964, a group of older vice lords wanted to change the direction of the neighborhood. So they changed the name of the gang to the conservative vice lords. In 1968, the King riots destroyed a big percentage of North Lawndale. The community was at its lowest point and hit rock bottom after the King riots. Politicians were so desperate for immediate change, they decided to jump in bed with the new and improved conservative vice lords.